meeting today in the middle of a revolution. Now, I understand that after the 20th century, a lot of you might be skeptical about Russians announcing revolutions. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not here to take away your private property. The revolution we're living through has two dimensions, a political revolution and a digital revolution. I think they're very closely interrelated. And I'd like to today discuss the relationship between the two. <clears throat> but first, I'd like to explain the experiences that I bring to the revolution. I know that today, if you argue about freedom in Britain, it could sound banal or obvious. Who would say that they're against freedom? But I have only lived for 32 years, and I have seen what the opposite of freedom looks like and how fragile it can be. I grew up in the country, the Soviet Union, where if you try to describe the world around you honestly, you're placing yourself in terrible danger. A wrong joke could lose you your job. For my grandparents' generation, it could lose you your life. I was 16 when the secret police first raided my house. They rifled through every book and every piece of furniture in search of thought crimes to convict my family of. Why? My father tried to set up and run a business. That was all. In the wild west of Russia in the 1990s, um, business rivals have clearly bribed senior officials and they came after him and shut him down. It happened all the time. It, was, it would be as if uh, in Waitrose, instead of competing better, they just had everyone in Sainsbury's arrested or shot. So the police arrived at our apartment and basically tore it apart. They ripped all the thousands of books off the shelves and rifled through them. My mother and I just stood there watching. Then, I soon learned, with only the beginning, sometime later, behind my father's chair where he would sit, we found a bullet in the wall. They had fired from across the apartment, um, apartment across the way. If he had been sitting here, there, he would have been dead. Lots of people told him to leave, but he refused. He had seen three countries. He refused to accept that he did not live in one. He started using his money to found the free press, especially Nova Gazeta, the freest and bravest newspaper in Russia, where journalists are murdered with horrifying frequency simply for telling the truth. All this was at the time when police were harassing us and endlessly questioning my father. All this happened because, I repeat, he was trying to run a bank and a newspaper. So no, I do not think that freedom is an obvious or a banal idea. What I learned then is that there's nothing more important than standing up for the ability to tell the truth against anyone and everyone who's trying to shut you up. The digital revolution has made it possible for more people than ever before to tell their truth their way than at any point in history. As Thomas Friedman has pointed out, just five years ago, Facebook didn't exist, Twitter was a sound, the cloud was in the sky, G4 was a parking place, LinkedIn was a prison, applications was what you sent to a college, and Skype was simply a typo. <laughs> Not today, though. A couple of months ago, I was in Tunisia where the people learned online uh, through leaked documents revealing how the dictator Ben Ali was in the pocket of the Americans and laughing at them. They organized their resistance online. Their hunger for freedom was something I recognized and wished that my 16-year-old self was, was able to tweet and Facebook from our apartment in Moscow. Not long after that, um, I was in Somalia, where they have no access to the internet in most parts of the country. And I can guarantee you, it makes everyone drastically worse off. Political revolutions happened much before digital revolutions, as we all know. But you can see how essential the internet has been in organizing that has changed the world in 2011 by looking at the shapes of these movements. The old resistance movements of the 20th century were shaped like armies or states with organizing committees and formal memberships. The new resistance movements are, are, are leaderless and shapeless, 
um, and have opened boundaries. Their Facebook made flesh. One of the most inspiring institutions in the world today is a campaigning organization called Avaz, which is founded by my friend Jeremy Hymans. While political parties wither, as we have seen during the last elections in the UK th four weeks ago, Avaz have managed to marshal millions and millions of people around the world into political action to stop the introduction of capital punishment for homosexuality in Uganda and to, to get Barack Obama to cancel an environmentally disastrous pipeline and many more. All this new activism means that we in the news gathering business face a dilemma. More people are speaking uh, than ever before. We used to control the sluice gates of fact and opinion. We used to be able to direct people's anger towards false hopes and distractions. It is getting harder than ever. Indeed, when we get it wrong, the anger does erupt upon us. The new spaces for people to express their anger did not just bring Hosni Mubarak. It brought down the news of the world. Now, I can't claim to have the answers to the dilemmas of the new world, but I am determined to launch experiments that might help us find them. I am deeply committed to the strengthening to some of the most precious places that we can talk to each other, to Nova Gazeta, the Independent, the I, and the Evening Standard. I'm very proud of what my team of journalists have been able to achieve in this regard. In this business, we're being constantly confronted with the depressing moan that print media is dead and all we can do is manage decline. Yet in the past two years, we have taken the Evening Standard off its sickbed and made it into a profitable paper at the heart of London, read by more than 1.6 million people daily. We have launched a new newspaper, The Eye, that already sells more than The Guardian. I think what we're doing is we're showing what print is actually for, which is to sift through important stories and, and separate them from the endless sea of blather and to highlight the slow news that is too often ignored in the permanent feed of Twitter and so on. Look, for example, at the Evening Standard's Dispossessed campaign that has put the poverty of London, in London at the heart of the political debate and has raised more than 10 million pounds for those in need. Now I want to find how we can infuse this avast style energy that's coursing across the world, this revolutionary, democratizing energy into those newspapers and the wider media. Soon we will be launching a new website called Independent Voices that will try in exciting and bold ways to provide spaces for citizens to campaign and change their world. Its editor will be the former independent journalist, Amal Rajan, with whom I worked closely over the past year, and I will be its editor-in-chief. It will be the most exciting place for opinion analysis and campaigning on the web. For my part, I will personally be using it to tell stories for persecuted journalists across the world, to find them, meet them, and give them the platform they need to resist their oppressors. Now, God knows what challenges lay ahead, but when I look at all these changes around us and all these revolutions, I feel optimistic. As Tom Stoppard once pointed out, the most ex exciting time to be alive is when everything you, th you thought you knew turns out to be wrong. Most of what, of what we knew as an industry is turning out to be wrong about the way newspapers work and the permanence of such powers as Mubarak and Murdoch. But as the old models fall, extraordinary new realities are emerging. It is getting harder than ever to deprive people of a voice as the secret police tried to deprive me and my family of a voice. One of the capitals of Twitter today is Tehran, and Moscow is not far behind. There are voices erupting all around us. Our challenge now is to make sure that the people don't march to the revolution only with the 140 characters of a tweet, but with all the richness and subtlety of our newspapers at their best. We're going to, launch, we're going to have to launch many experiments to make this happen. Not all of them will succeed, but I do know one thing. It is an amazing time to be alive and to be free. Thank you very much.